Okay, hello, hello, hello. It's Wednesday. Welcome to One Song Away Challenge Day Three. Okay, so I'd like to just start off with um, a bit of feedback and testimonials I've had from previous participants. And just so we can wait for a few more people, maybe there's somebody else coming to join us. Let's see. In the meantime, uh, in fact, let's just do a quick recap of um, the last few days. So this is the five steps to a perfect music release. Not that there's such a thing as perfection, but we're trying our best. And this is the beginner's guide. So it's a stage one beginner's guide to releasing music online to Spotify mainly. And this is for somebody who's, if you're new to releasing music, or you don't have a lot of time, or you don't have a lot of budget. There's a five-step process. The process starts off with planning, then preparation, then implementation, then the launch, and then the post-launch. Okay, let's listen to what Sonny Davidson has to say about One Song Away and his experiences. I just want to see, hopefully the share includes the sound. Let me just reshare. Just jump in quickly and um, give you a sound bite. But uh, yeah, I'd just like to say thanks so much for creating, well, two things um, that really um, worked for me the the supportive co um uh the the support uh, the mutual support of everyone here is just massive you know to feel like we're all together on a journey uh, it's such a big part of it having in the past felt you know just really on my own with it and um you know so just to feel as part of a community is a massive uh, gives a massive sort of impetus to the whole my personal process and uh, the other thing is all the amazing resources and information um that just laying out systematically you know step by step what we need to do is massively valuable 
because again that's something which can just feel overwhelming as well as the sense of like oh god it's just me i'm on my own with it you know um once you realize you're part of a community and everyone's got a bit of the puzzle and everyone's got you know uh, little nuggets of information that we need in order to move things forward um, the fact that all that information is there to refer to it's not going anywhere so even if we can't get through it right now you know we know we can come back to it and we know that there is a systematic process so that takes a lot of out of the stress of thinking about you know how am I going to get this music out there it's like oh okay it's just the information's all there I just need to sit down make some time and space to actually go through the process and that also is immensely valuable so um, I think it's absolutely extraordinary what you've created Samesh super grateful and um, I really get a sense that this could be something which will really help to lift up like like you're saying like a whole movement a whole scene if we're all working together networking together um we're all encouraging each other we're all you know reminding each other of all the various things we need to do um yeah i think we're gonna all make incredible strides together so giving so much thanks for this amazing resource and this incredible um inspiration that has been created by this course that you've uh, pulled together so much thank you brother hey sunny so glad to glad to have you on board it's been amazing getting to know you over the last year and a half or so and so happy to have you in this process and part of this community uh -huh. thank you brother thank, thank you, you. Okay, <clears throat> that was Sunny Davidson. And let's see. Just jump in quickly and um, give you a sample. Let's go to. Richard Down. Hi. Um... Oh, let's try that again. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, so much. Thank you so much for this one it's really confirming um i found like this this big motor running as this course started and i've been distracted with other things um and i've been so wanting to focus on this one and get into it um but knowing that it's there and that i can draw upon it uh is just amazing because I was I was frantic at first, thinking, "Oh, I can't keep up with this. Uh, there's so much coming in at the moment. Um, uh, will I be able to catch up and gain ground and, and and sort of be there?" And then I realized, "Well, I can fall back on this, and that's just amazing." So, um, and and so confirming that all of everybody here, you know, wants the same thing. You know they they're going for uh, fulfilling a dream, um, and the beautiful take on it, Samash, also how you wanted to proliferate it and make it available for other people. Um, I think that's just so good. I'm so happy to put the word around and get people to your door, uh, for sure. Um, and so I, I really, um, I'm just very thankful, really. It came along at a time when I um, was looking for something just like this. I needed to push to share my music in this way. And I've, I've never put things in recorded form, well, not a lot, a few here and there, because I thought that it sort of polarized the energy and, um i kept my acros sort of live for live events um but i feel quite differently about it these days and uh and to know how to come forward and to you know, place this in front of people in a way that will work uh i'm very very enthusiastic anyhow um wishing you all the very very best um I, I really want to uh, approach Maria as well for some kind of uh, video um, uh, work or or something. 
um, yeah, everything that Maya said just earlier um, just absolutely hit the nail on the head. And also, Joy, uh, this is wonderful. Thank you, Sunny, everybody, everybody here. Aho, aho. Hey, thank you, Richard. That's Richard Down from the UK, another one of our One Song Away course members. So thank you so much for just taking a couple of minutes to listen to those testimonials. And um, we're going to go straight into the presentation. Let's see. Okay, so this is uh, day three, um, Wednesday, the step three of the five step process. And this is this step three is called implementation. So implementation is uh, where we have uh, one to two weeks before the release. So we remember we we're going from a, a four to a six week cycle. Actually, I listened to a, a video today uh, and just excuse me because I've got a bit of a hay fever. So if, if I turn off the camera quickly, <laughs> it's because I'm sneezing. It's really bad. Um, so yeah, actually today I listened to um, a podcast and they were talking, Guy was talking about specifically about the cycle, the release cycle, uh, this one to you know, whether you release four weeks or six weeks or 10 weeks in a cycle. And also about the album releases and why you release tracks and why you re release albums, but all albums. So um, there is a particular, um, you know, reason why we're focusing on Spotify as the main focus of our drive to release music. Like the question is, why don't we, we focus on SoundCloud or why don't we focus on Apple Music or why don't we focus on Deezer or all these any other platforms and the fact is that that the 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 stats out there are that Spotify has literally 80 percent of the market so there's 80 percent more people who have a Spotify account than any of the other accounts that's why we're particularly focused on Spotify uh, Spotify also has a way of really, uh, their technology is really advanced so that they are able to find um, sort of music and help uh, users find specific music and create a really amazing experience for their users. I don't, I'm not sure, like I've, I've seen sort of stats about like what the, what the price of uh, or what the Spotify pay artists and it's probably not the top but it's also not the bottom either. It's somewhere in the middle range. Also remember, depending on where the stream comes from, there will be a different payment. So streams coming from Brazil um, actually pay differently to streams coming from Brazil, uh, from Germany. And I haven't, I haven't seen exactly how much, but there is a difference. So anyway, the reason why we do the four week uh, release cycle, and I'm, I'm actually not going to, I'm not going to promote the six week anymore. I'm promoting a four week release cycle is because there's such a thing that Spotify has, which is like a playlist that they create automatically and it's called release radar. Now, when we're releasing onto Spotify, the, the point is that, oh, welcome Colleen. So the point about when we're, why are we focusing on Spotify? Because Spotify, has the biggest chance for us to get our music to the most people. Now, the reason why we do the four week release is because Spotify has certain playlists that, that are sort of managed through algorithms and also editorials as well. But these algorithms, if you get your track on the algorithm, it just gives you a bit of a boost, right? You get like the ability to get more streams more users more fans more likes more follows so there is a particular playlist called release radar and release radar basically is a playlist that spotify create for you and the only thing on there is new releases okay so if you want to be on the release radar and you want to get that boost that happens after the release okay what you're going to do Welcome, Agniska. What you're going to do is you're going to do a four-week release cycle, okay? So you're going to release a track, and then four weeks later, you're going to release another track. Four weeks later, you're going to release another track. Four weeks later, you're going to release another track. 
And that's what you're going to try and do, okay? And the reason for that is you're going to try to stay on this re uh, release radar. And also, this gives you the biggest opportunity to, to sort of activate the Spotify algorithms. And if you activate the algorithms and you get on one of their amazing playlists, you can get absolutely like millions of streams for absolutely nothing. It's like winning the jackpot. Uh, and I know people that have done it. It's, it's amazing. It can give you a massive boost. So the other thing that I realized and that, that I had to think about, uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. The other thing the guy was talking about, very, very, excuse me, one sec, one sec. Oh, hey, fever. So the other thing the guy was talking about was the fact that, you know, a lot of people like put out songs that are five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes. In fact, the song that I'm promoting with Moshe Halperin, uh, Oso Blanco, which was originally recorded by Boveda Celeste in Brazil. And he, they did a, Moshe Halperin, George Barker and Aura Rescon did a, a remix or like a, like a, what do you, like a, you know, play of it. Or what do you call it? There's a, a word for it. My, my hay fever mind is not thinking. Um, so yeah, so, so they did a recording of that track. And the track is literally 10 minutes long. It's like the longest track ever. And he was talking about, the guy talking today uh, that I was listening to was talking about, if you're releasing music to Spotify, he highly recommends that you release radio edits, okay, radio versions of your track. And why is that? Why, why would he like really like advise on releasing radio edits the radio edits like two to three minutes max yeah that's because a, a stream on spotify only gets recorded or registered and you get paid after 30 seconds okay so unless somebody listens to 30 seconds of a track you don't get paid and it doesn't get registered as a stream so what you want to do is you want to you want to actually uh release the shortest versions of your track that you can actually make because what it does is one it it gives you more opportunity to get more streams and therefore get paid more okay because what's going to happen is if one of your fans really likes that track instead of like just going to the next track they're going to put that track on to repeat. They're going to listen to it again, right? And you'll often get, if you really hit a, a nerve with, with you know, or, you know re really connect with, with a, a fan and that song, they'll put it on their repeats and listen to it three or four times if it's at two or three minutes. If the song's at 10 minutes, you've got much less chance of this the song being replayed or restreamed by the same, um, the same sort of fan. And... In that same amount of time, you could have that fan could have listened to the song three times, and you would have got paid three times, and you would have had three streams. So that made a lot of sense to me. So that's my top tip for today. In fact, two top tips for today. One, release the shortest tracks you can. Okay, you might release a longer version, but initially you can have different versions of your track, right? Release the shortest track you can, because that will allow your fans to be able to possibly put the song on repeat and number two try as much as possible to do a four-week cycle so you can stay on this playlist called release radar as often as possible and then possibly get a better chance of sort of uh, catching a uh, algorithm sort of activating an algorithm playlist okay two two very good tips for today so step three, implementation. So this is very exciting. This is where you take all your planning, you take all your preparation, and you actually put it into action. Remember, you've done your plan, you've prepared all your 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 uh, sort of your contents and all your your stuff. And this is where you're going to release your artwork banners with the dates. So you're going to change the the dates on your on your Facebook page, and you say release out now or release out in on the 25th of July or the 30th of August or whatever the date is, right? 
Then you're going to also release your images of the track onto your social media. So you're going to put an image out there for on, on Instagram, uh, you know, and maybe, you know, you're also going to put out, you can put a, Spot, a Spotify banner. You can change the banner on your Spotify. You're also going to share your pre-save. Like this is one to two weeks before the release. You're going to share your pre-save. So those are just three very basic things you would do in a very basic release in the third stage of implementation. What other things you're going to do? You could also send an email out. And there's a whole list of things, but like, let's just keep it really basic, really simple. And this is just the implementation. Step three of the five weeks, uh, the five step process. So step four is the launch and that I'm gonna go through to tomorrow, but let's just see if there's any questions. <laughs> okay, hey, cover, thank you, Ava, that's right. It's a cover, cover release. So the other thing is when you're releasing, um, oh yeah, so so Ava, did you have a question yesterday about uh, about like the different distributors? I think somebody had a question about that. I think it was Ava because I found a really good resource for different distributors that sort of summarizes all the different distributors and, you know, sort of gives you the different options. Am I right? Who was it? <laughs> okay, Ava's saying she saw that. That's great. Okay, it's you. So Ava, you've got some homework to do. <laughs> Have you decided yet? Did you take a look? Okay, cool. So Ava's going with CD Baby. So uh, we have Agnieszka and Colleen in the house. So does anybody have any questions that are like urgent, urgent, like burning questions that need answering that I can answer for you? I just apologize. I do have like really bad hay fever. So apologies at the moment. Do we have any questions based on the implementation phase of the five-step release process or anything else that I can help you with? Colleen's here, CD Baby is what I'm using too. So Colleen is, has joined the One Song Away. Actually, I've changed the name. It's Sacred Sound Community Founding Member. So Colleen is one of our founding members. She was on the last challenge and she's joining us. Colleen, do you have a, when's your next release coming up? Put in the chat. Agnieszka, if you've got a release coming up, put it in the chat. And Ava, no, not yet. Okay. And Ava, do you have a, a release coming up? Do you know, do you have a day chat that you, you want to release it or? Okay, so Colleen's in the process of making a plan. Very good. Okay, so the other thing I was listening to um, that that I was, you know, sort of pondering is this whole process of releasing albums or releasing tracks, right? And um, according to some of the things I've listened to, um, you know, a lot of artists have this question, especially in the beginning when you start releasing album or start releasing your music onto Spotify. Should I release an album or should I release a track, right? And in fact, there are there are certain uh, circumstances where releasing an album is advised. So one of those circumstances is where you don't have any music on Spotify. You want to get a good like amount of songs onto Spotify. And you've got other music to release at the same time afterwards. Because what you don't want, okay, you don't want to release a whole album or four or five songs or 10 songs or whatever, and then have nothing to release for a whole year. So you want to you want to start the momentum and also Spotify will reward you if you do releases regularly on a four-week cycle. So if you've got a whole lot of tracks, it's possible to, it's also totally advisable and totally possible to work that you release your tracks, a few, and then keep on releasing in a four, six weeks, four, four week cycle, not six weeks, four weeks. 
and then make sure you keep on recording don't stop recording you have to keep on recording so you've got a, a new single or new track to release every single time yeah you could also i guess release the radio edits so that could be like if you if you're really struggling you don't have a track this month to release maybe make a radio edit just a shorter version or maybe you've released a radio edit and then you make a longer version okay you tell you release a, a longer version that's another option Ava says, I think I will wait for the EP of four songs to be ready and released in February 2024. Wow, that's a long way. <laughs> You're going to be so good at releasing <laughs> by the time it comes. I think you'll release the EP and then promote each song one after the other. Maybe put some lives on YouTube, okay? Colleen says, I really want to do this whole process smoothly, the first song time, so I'm not so afraid of the process this is why i'm learning leaning on you Samesh. that's cool you're in the perfect place i'm ready to do a four week cycle for a year fantastic so my my vision my intention is to take an artist to a million streams colleen is it going to be you <laughs> great okay i want to i want to go on the journey with an artist for a million streams it's totally possible totally totally possible if you follow these strategies also i think it has to you probably have to do ads i'm sorry <laughs> so I, th I think colleen is motivated to do the be the first one song away one million stream artist <laughs> that'd be so great okay so let's uh if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm going to uh, just do, let's just do some surfing, right? Let's get out there and take a look at uh, what would be nice is if anybody's got any, uh, any social media channels you want me to review or take a look at, and we can give you some tips on it. It's always really helpful to get somebody else's uh, sort of, you know, outside uh, sort of perspective and opinion on how your social media is set up, etc. Okay, so Colleen says she's willing to do some ads already. That's fantastic. Because to tell you what, uh, I will show you. Let's just see. Not this one. I'm going to show you something. Not this one, really. Uh, let me show you some. Let me show you uh, Moshi Halperins. Okay. So let's go here. So I've just been analyzing um, the. So you, do you know, as an artist, you can get a you get a specific um, you know sort of Spotify login. It's called artist.spotify.com. So if you haven't got a Spotify uh, artist login, you should already create one. Okay, that's really important. Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know Isla, Isla release only albums, but, you know, Isla is a special example. <laughs> she let, Let's take a look at Isla. Let's take a look at Isla's. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at Isla. You know, I was working with her before and, um, you know, the, I think she had one track, like all her music is absolutely amazing. Like it's really, she really is beautiful. Uh, the music's like incredible. But there's that one one song that is called um, Velicon Alvento, obviously. This one has had, what, 13 and a half million streams that when that track blew up it's like everything else blew up massively but this lady this lady isla you can see she's worked her butt off for many many years to get to this point this is not just like an overnight success she's released a whole lot of stuff let's just take a look okay so so yeah, when you get to this level, right? When you get to this level where you're releasing tracks and you're getting a million stream, 
then I totally give you permission to release albums. Okay, at this level, you don't need to just release singles, <laughs> especially because this lady is releasing. Okay, this I don't know if this was a latest release. This lady is releasing like an album every year, 10 songs. Look at this. And she's releasing to a you know a, a fan base of 263,000 listeners. Okay. So she can really afford to just release an album, like no problem, because she's gonna have the, the listenership there. But when in the beginning, you you want to take every advantage that you can. Okay, so so this album, 2017, 2018, 2020. I'm sure there's other albums. I'm not sure. Maybe there's those are albums and then there's singles. Okay, popular. So those are popular releases. You've got your albums. So three albums, 2017, 2018, 2020. So let's dive into the water. You know, this is an amazing album and it was released two, five years ago. Okay, so... In the last five years, she's really got done amazing. Okay, she's got up to that level. But, you know, before this album, she probably wasn't here. Okay, she wasn't at this level. And then she has released singles. So 2022 singles, singles, singles. 2021 singles. So she hasn't just released albums. She has released singles as well. Let's just see the chat. Ah, oh, sorry, guys. So sorry. You haven't. You can't see my screen. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. How about that? Is that better? Have I just bored you for a whole five minutes? <laughs> so sorry. Okay, I'm looking at Isla here, right? So Isla has released a whole lot of singles. Okay, she she does release albums, but she has released a whole lot of singles. Look at this. So these are all singles, right? So what it looks like, she releases singles, a whole lot of singles, and then she releases the album. So so the whole releasing singles is not like a thing that she won't do. Like this is Agua de, de Moore that was released 20, uh, in February 2023. This one here. April 2022. So yeah, lots of lots of single releases. But she's she is like prolific in terms of the amount of songs that she's putting out there. She's put a lot of songs out there. I want to see when Velo Connell Vento was actually released. This would be interesting. So yeah, 2017, you know. You know, she was obviously like playing in a lot of gatherings, a lot of ceremonies. Uh but she had this big break, 2017. Her her you know career just went off the scale, right? So 2017. Uh, okay, cool. So let's take a look at this. What's really interesting is let's take a look at uh, let's look at take a look at Isla's um, YouTube. This is really interesting. You know you need the right tools to make. With Shopify, you get all the right tools to sell. Design tools to build your brand. Excuse me. Okay, so this is amazing. Like 208,000 subscribers. Like when I was working with her, I think we were at like 39,000 subscribers. And then she went, she got to 50,000 subscribers. And then after 50,000, like within no time, she was at 100. Yeah. Do you think we should also put our songs on YouTube when published on Spotify? Do you think it's important to do video clips? Yes. Yes. Definitely. 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 Yeah. You definitely like um, in terms of content, like you've got a whole lot of different options. But what we're finding out now is that shorts are massive. Massive, massive, massive. Isla's not doing any shorts. That doesn't mean they're not absolutely massive. Okay, let's take a let's take a look at because I know that uh, Sunny Davidson, who also did my course, has also been uh, doing lots of lots of shorts.
So he's saying he's actually getting really, really good traction with shorts. So these are his shorts here, you see? It's doing really well, like Facebook shorts and uh, see, he's really got into his shorts. Look at that. That's amazing. So just very small little tracks of uh, little snippets of your song. This is from the 3rd of March. And then here. Then here. And let's look at some of the let's look at some of these views. So 244 views, 300, 404 view, five views, 229. Uh, and that is okay, 329 subscribers. That's pretty good for only 329 subscribers. Let's see his other videos, like long form videos, 140. Okay, well, that one's done pretty well. That's just that's an official video. 608 that's a year ago so yeah he's doing really he's loving the shorts the shorts are doing really well so we do suggest do shorts shorts on tiktok shorts on facebook shorts on instagram and shorts on youtube so let's just take a look at isla's videos i'll just show you how prolific she is with her videos she does she's she's literally blown up on YouTube and she put so much effort in from the beginning. She was releasing so many tracks. So yeah, look for example, six years ago, right? So this was six years ago, was just before 2017. So maybe 2017 onwards, like 2016 or 2017, six years ago, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 11, okay? So she's producing a video about a month, one a month. And then five years ago, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's not, not a huge amount. Then four years ago, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, actually not that many. I, I thought there were more. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 3, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30. So 30 videos in that year, right? That's the year where she went, 2000. She went from uh, sort of, yeah, 30,000 subscribers to like a hundred a hundred thousand in absolutely no time massive massive increase yeah so uh ava asked do you think we should also put our songs on youtube when published on spotify do you think it's important to do video clips so i'd answer that yes definitely and we share them on at the same time so i'm not really sure what you mean by share them If you can just confirm what you mean by that, a release them. Yeah, absolutely. But remember, like your videos are part of the release cycle, right? So let's just go back to the release. So as part of your release, you're going to release your artwork banners with a date. You release your images and release your social media. Okay. Uh, and then you've got your launch. Your launch is like one day before or two days after. Uh, and you're going to do a whole lot of stuff. But then what do you do after the post-launch? Okay, so the post-launch is this is where you take all your videos and this is where you post your videos, right? So you can release snippets and shorts of your video up until the time that you release the track. Just short, just short uh, uh, sort of snippets. And then actually like, after the release, after you have released the track, okay, then you would release your official video. You release, then maybe the day after you release your lyric video. And you can have two or three official videos. You don't have, just have to have one. 
you can have a live video as well. So there's a whole a numerous amount of different videos that you can post to promote your track. And, you know, it can combine four, five, 10 videos, as many videos as possible. Every single video people will watch. <clears throat> Basically, the more new content that you've got, the better. Uh, so yeah, let's let's take a look at uh, Instagram quickly. This guy sent me a, a <laughs> sent me a DM. He's selling all sorts of weird stuff, and he's asking me if I want to buy. I'm like, are you crazy? How can you do that on Instagram? It's so blatant. You're obviously like the FBI or something trying to trap people. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Isla. Let's take a look at what her Instagram looks like. But just quickly, in terms of the in terms of her YouTube channel, like find people like this and just model exactly what they're doing. You can see what they're doing. It's brilliant. They're doing great. They're getting lots of views. Just follow what they're doing. Yeah, two years ago. Let's just see how many videos she did two years ago. So two years ago. So then she she must have really got into videos all of a sudden. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, loads of videos two years ago. There's 2021. Wow, loads. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, six, seven, two, eight, nine, thirty, one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. That's forty videos. Forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four. 44 videos, 44 videos in one year. That is loads. That is, so that is three or four videos. That's almost a video a week, which is amazing. And that's why her YouTube channel has got to, you know, that amount of subscribers. I think recently she slowed down a bit, you know, child and everything. One, five, 10, that's 11, 15, uh, 16, 21, yeah, so 21 last year, and then this year, not so many, like, let's see, okay, so 20, like, 9, like, 12 this year, so far, but she's doing really, really great with the videos, really, really good, okay, look at this, so here we go, so this is, I'm just looking at the frequency of posting, it really like it's really interesting. June the twenty second, May the eighteenth, two days ago, six days ago, June the twenty seventh, twenty sixth, twenty fifth, twenty fourth, twenty third, twenty third, twenty first, twentieth, eighteenth, sixteenth. So literally, she is posting like every day. Pretty much every day, she's there's a post about something. Okay, and that's what we suggest. We do suggest you use Instagram very often, as much as possible. Yeah, okay, I can just quickly, I'm going to go over the post launch. I'll go, I can go through the post launch quickly for Ava. You can also watch the replay. I'll, I'll, I'll run over it very quickly. Do you have any particular questions, Ava, in terms of like the launch and the post launch? So basically the launch is like the day before your launch and two days after, okay? And before the launch, you're gonna email your list, you're gonna release your images on social media, you're gonna share your pre-save, you're gonna PM all your friends and family. Like there's literally so many things you can do. And then the post-launch, you know, you've got thank yous, you can analyze your results and learn lessons. Like that's a very summarized version, obviously. <laughs> 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 uh, you can watch the video i'm going to go into it tomorrow in more detail i don't want to like preempt everything <laughs> so ladies 
and gents. I'm sure there's a gent out there somewhere. Uh, is there any questions? How are we doing out there? Ava, when are you releasing music? I want, what are, did, did you say when you're releasing music? Is that you said next year, 2024? Okay, cool. So, so Ava, what your strategy is, okay, is you're, if you're releasing in February 2024, I would suggest that you focus for the rest of this year up until February 2024 on getting your social media like growing your social media as much as possible, okay? So that by the time you release your track, okay, you are releasing your track to as a bigger social media following as possible. And what is my strategy for social media? Colleen, can you tell us the three, the three uh, tests for my, my new 1 million streams uh, students? Um, what is the three words of my social media strategy? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Come on. I'll give you a clue. The first word starts with a K. Oh yeah, consistency is one, but it's not what I'm thinking about. So K, and then the next word is N, it starts with the N. And the next word starts with a T. Yes, Ava. Very good. Very good student. 10 points to Ava. Great. So no like and trust. So Ava's going to spend time like on social media, putting her stuff out there on a consistent basis. Okay. So one, you're going to at least one post on Instagram every single day. This goes for everybody, including you, Colleen and Agniska. Okay, a post every single day on Instagram. A story you can do three or four times a day. Okay, and if you're worried about like, what am I going to post? Okay, then I'm going to show you what you're going to do. Okay, basically, you're going to go and who's who's seen my video about the, uh, the reposter? Okay, I posted a video about repost, and it's amazing. This repost app is like so cool, because often days you you come across like I just don't have anything to post, but if you're going to your Instagram, you should be looking at Instagram at least for ten minutes a day, right? Okay, so this this. This video here, you should definitely watch this video. I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay, watch this video. And then when you, on the days when you don't have anything cool to post, okay, post, do that. Okay, it's called reposter. It basically gives you an opportunity of going through any Instagram post and reposting it onto your story or your feed. Okay, so if you've got nothing to post, go through your feed and find something that's really cool, especially the stuff that's been uh, like you, you can see my Instagram, for example. Okay, this is one song away. I've just started this account and I've got four other accounts that I'm promoting as well. So don't judge me for the no for the lack of followers. <laughs> so this uh this feed, okay, let's just take a look. Have I done any? I actually haven't done many reposts on this one for some reason. Uh, let's just take another, let's look at Sacred Sound Festival. Okay, check this out. Okay. So this here, this little video here got loads and loads and loads, like hundreds or like 50,000 likes on somebody's feed, right? Also, like one of my uh, one of the people in the one song away, Ella Chaska, just released a, a, a track. Like instead of trying to find the image, you can actually just go to her feed, take the image, and repost it using this app. Okay, very very simply. I also reposted this. This was really cool. Okay, 
uh, I reposted this, I reposted this, I reposted this, and I reposted that. You know, and they got like 100, look at this one, I reposted that one. They got 120, you know, sort of likes, which is, you know, more than my average, should I say, like, because it's cool content. It's content that is sort of, uh, it's, should we say it is, uh, yeah, viral content, okay? Okay, so going back to, to know, like, and trust. So we've got... I'm probably not showing you my screen, am I? That's it. I'm going to try again. Sorry, guys. I keep on forgetting. Okay, I was just talking about no like and oh, I was talking about this reposter app. And I was just talking about this this image here, this image here, uh, this image. Can you see that now? Is that better? Okay, cool. So sorry, I keep on forgetting. So this image here, this image here, this video, this video, and this video got 120 likes. And that's just, I just found a really cool video that other people are liking and I reposted it onto my feed and it got loads of content. I like loads of uh, really good, you know, sort of interaction. So if you can't find something that you're really excited about, so yeah, so you post already the post of someone else. Yeah, exactly. So what I do is I go to my phone, okay? And I go to my feed. Obviously, I'm, I'm following very cool people because they all post really cool stuff. Like this is Daya. She's she's like the cacao lady. She makes the best cacao in the world. So yeah, I'd go down here. For example, Lydia, right? She's got this, this single coming out. This is something I would repost. The point is like she doesn't, she, she wouldn't mind me reposting it as well, right? Uh, but the first person that I post, posted is mentioned. So you post, you post. Can you, Ava, can you just rephrase that? But the first person that I posted is mentioned. Uh, basically, when, when you post it, it actually says who it's from on the left bottom left-hand side of the post. So it actually tells them where, where it's coming from, which is great. So I'll go through here. I'll go through my feed. And I'll if I don't have anything to post on that day, I'll go through my feed. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I really like this, this image. I really like the video. And I'll repost it onto my feed. That gives them some like uh, some promotion, and it also helps my account because I get uh, some some you know some more interaction on my account, and I'm more consistent. Yeah, of course, it's good to promote. Oh yeah, so this is the other thing. Okay, my other top one hundred, my top tip of the day right now is for you to follow. Like I'm going to on my Instagram, let me just, I am going to share it this time so you see it, okay. Uh, on my Instagram over here, everybody can see, I'm going to go to my profile, okay. And what I want you to do is go to whoever you're following, okay. And I want you to unfollow every single person that is not in your genre. That's not a possible, who's, for example, like th this is the strategy. The strategy is that you want to follow, only follow 100 people that are the highest level in your genre or your niche, okay? So if you're into folk music, okay, you're going to go and you're going to find 100 people that are really big in folk music. And you're going to do that by searching, for example, you can go, let's, let's do medicine music, okay? So I'll go under the thing, medicine music. I'll search on the hashtag. And I'm going to, I'm following this, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to search through here. I'm going to find people that are getting loads and loads of really good interaction. And I'm going to follow them. Okay. This is anti-corona. Okay, I'm going to make sure I'm following him. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to keep on finding. Uh, I don't know why it's only showing me that. But I'm going to, to keep on looking and finding people in my genre that have good followings. And I'm going to follow them. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, for example, uh, Anta Corona. Okay. Uh, this is Medicine Festival. There is that. There he is there. So this is Anza Karana. Okay. And he's in my, he's, he's a possible somebody that 
One, he's a, a medicine musician. So I know that that people that are following him are going to be in who like his music. They're going to be medicine musicians, okay? Uh, what uh, Colleen says, what makes me uncomfortable about that is people who are friends or supporters or whatnot kind of expect me to follow them and send them love. Well, the thing is, kind of expect you to. I don't think it's so much about that. This is all about networking. It's really about like, if you look at those three things, know, like, and trust. The first thing is no. People need to know you, okay? And the only way they're ever going to get to know you is if you put your stuff out there. Then like, the only way they're going to get to like you if you start some type of interaction with them. And that is liking their stuff. And then trusting is where you actually start to create a relationship where you, you post something on their feed and they respond and then you respond. Now you're creating a trust relationship, okay? And the more people that you can, you can sort of transition from no to trust, the bigger your fan base is going to be and the more successful you're going to be. I promise you 100%, if you have 10,000 followers and all of them you've created from a no like and trust sort of a relationship your music is going to do amazing no doubt i, I absolutely guarantee it but if you've got like ten thousand followers and they're all like random people who don't really like your music they're just following you for some random reason then that's not really what you're aiming at i'd rather have a thousand followers that are highly engaged that i've created relationship with than ten thousand followers that are, are just random people okay so how I'm going to build my followers is I want my followers in the niche that I want them to be in. Okay. So I'm going to, to go to Anta Karana, first of all. And this is like, there's a lot of, there is integrity behind this. This is not, I'm not like, I'm not, uh, I'm not like, this is not out of integrity because I do like his stuff. I'm going to read it quickly and I'm going to like it. And then if I really like it, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go through basically his feed. And I'm going to like everything that he does, or at least at least 10 times. I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to write there. That's so cool. Congratulations. So you start, like, start the conversation, okay, with people that are in your niche, especially other artists, okay? Start building those relationships. Start networking with artists. These are artists that you can collaborate with. These are artists that if you have a good enough relationship with, with them, when it comes time, like you start nurturing that relationship, when it comes time for you to release your track, okay, and you've built up that relationship with that artist, do you think they're more inclined if you send them a DM and say, hey, Anta, would you mind sharing my new single? Are they more inclined to do it or not? Of course, they would love to share your single because you've already created this relationship with them. You've already liked and given them lots of love by spending two or three months or five months or a year going through all their stuff and continually interacting with them. Okay. Listening to their stuff, I would actually listen to it and I would actually reply. And then I would, you know, I would, I would actually try like get really good interaction with with Antar. And but the first thing to, to, to do is like his stuff. And you can see how this works because I've seen this with other people who do it with me. If I go to my notifications and I go down here and what do you notice about this particular thing over here? Whoever this guy is, I don't know who he is, some random chap off the streets. He's liked my stuff four times, but you notice how you see that. That is just so uh, visible. Okay. If you go down your feed and, and somebody's liked your stuff once, you don't really notice it. Right. But say like I'm a medicine musician and, and, somebody comes along and likes 10 of my things like this one dj sound dj sound dj sound and this one dj alpha production alpha production alpha production you really you cannot not notice that person like now forever i'm going to remember that name now if that that dj alpha production keeps on on liking my stuff i'm going to have to notice them if i've got no choice and then they start commenting to my stuff i'm going to respond to it and then I will start that relationship. And then eventually, like if he ever asked me to share one of his posts or share one of his tracks, I'm so much more inclined to do it, right? 
And now, if I've got like two or three thousand followers in the niche that that you're in, okay, all of a sudden my my track or my single is going to be in front of all the people that I really want th to listen to my track. It's it's an amazing system. So your homework is in the next year to uh, to find one hundred people, okay, who influencers who ha already have the audience that you want your music to be shown in front of and you're going to spend the next year going through one at a time and creating relationships with them going to their instagram and liking all their stuff going to their other socials going to their like uh wherever they're going like crowdfunding going to facebook wherever it is uh you know sharing it on facebook sharing their stuff getting engaged with them, okay, probably Facebook as well, going to Facebook, liking their stuff, and really nurturing that relationship, so that by the time you get to release music, okay, you can take advantage of that relationship that you, not advantage, but you can, you, you can use that, uh, that, that relationship that you've cultivated over that time, and just ask them a favor, hey, hey, Anton, like I'm about to release a track, I know your your fans and your your followers would actually love to hear this. Do you mind uh, just sharing this on your Facebook feed? And I promise you, one hundred percent, he's going to say yes. And all of a sudden, my my track my my track is in front of a thousand followers that I know would love that track. So I've got way more chance of getting more streams of that and more followers. Because if you're in sacred music genre or you're in folk genre or whatever genre you're in. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm saying that. Yeah. Because I don't want to, I, I don't want to see in my feed, I don't want to see anybody else's stuff because I only want to be following people that I am really, really uh, connected with or that I want to like, like for me personally, like for this, for example, for one song away. For One Song Away, which is uh, my music coaching program, like it makes literally no sense for me to have anybody else on here except musicians. Okay. Like Katie Melson, I know her. She's lovely. I love her. I love her massage. But literally, there's no reason for me to follow her because in this, in this, I, I'm not looking for anybody except musicians in this, uh, on this uh, account. On my personal account that I may use for um, for uh, for social media, for connecting with people, et cetera, et cetera, I might have a few family and friends on there, but not many, not many. I'm going to go through this whole list and I'm going to basically unfollow anybody that isn't in my genre, who isn't like somebody that I want to want to see their stuff and I probably want to share their stuff. Uh, and most of these people are, most of these people are people that are musicians, uh, whose stuff I think I could share, um, and who, if I shared something, they're going to be interested in my stuff. Really like Instagram is not really a, like a interactive social media thing for me personally. It's more about, okay, this is my community. This is my party. And in my party, I want to, you know, have this sort of thing going on. Uh, I'm not I'm not here to be entertained like the the more the less uh time that you spend entertaining yourself by being stuck on social media by oh this is nice but it's got nothing to do with your music or it's nothing to do with you promoting music you know you're just wasting your time rather spend that time on you know doing something that's going to forward your music that's going to either build a relationship with oh build a relationship with your uh, i didn't share again i'm sorry build a relationship with somebody who might uh, be a fan or somebody that you can network with who's in the same genre as you that at some stage you might want to ask them to share your thing so use your time very very wisely and in that way you're going to you, you you're going to improve it's going to get better you're not going to waste your time on social media you're not going to get overwhelmed you're not going to spend time doing stuff that you don't need to do. 
I don't know if I've waffled on for way too long. <laughs> Has any of this been valuable for you guys? <laughs> Remember, no like and trust. We're trying to build those no like and trust relationships. Any questions? Okay, well, at least at least Ava has found it interesting. That's fantastic. Okay, so remember, ladies, guys, you've got to you've got to be intentional about your social media use. Don't waste time with social media. Use it in a way that's going to grow your tribe, or is going to network and going to, going to move you forward in your career top tip of the day so thank you so much i know we've gone over an hour it's a long time i'm sorry and i thank you for all the time that you've spent and your um your time and your efforts i wish you the best and tomorrow we'll go through the launch and the post launch and you can also watch the video for tomorrow if you're going to miss that uh, you can also buy the course i'll tell you about the course tomorrow so thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this diatribe and I hope you found it valuable and good luck with your, hang on a sec, let me say good morning. All right, Agnishka thinks, thank you very much. That was precious. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> Colleen's back. Just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot for taking part. And bye, Colleen. Have a good day. And we need to meet. You've got your meeting. Don't forget. <laughs> Join us tomorrow. Speak soon. God bless. Bye.